So this is an eight channel mono or a four channel stereo summing mixer. And it has two channels output, which you can see on the output and the eight channels on the input. And I'm gonna show you guys how to connect this to your audio interface. This one is the Antelope Audio Orion. If you don't have anything like this and you have a smaller interface or you have something bigger, some of these, or if not all of these practices will be very similar for yourself. And if they're not, you can ask questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Let's get into it. So first of all, the cables that you're probably gonna need, uh, generally cables like this. So the cable that I currently have for this interface is a TRS balanced output. And on the other side, it's a DB25 connector. Now the reason for that, I'll show you in a minute. The other cables that you may need, uh, something like this, balanced TRS cables, depending on the connection on your summing mixer. So this summing mixer, when I got this from Vintage Maker, as you can see on the back here, I asked Vintage Maker to set the outputs as TRS connectors. And primarily I did that because I can always get TRS connectors everywhere. They seem to be always available. So I figured that would be the easiest and the most practical for myself. So let's get into how I connected it to the back of my interface. I take this cable here, go around all the way to the back. Don't mind the cables. That's just the way I roll. But this DB25 connector is gonna go into my outputs of my interface. So if I connect that to the back of my interface like that, screw these in to make sure they're secure. And that is my output connector right there. That's done. These connectors here, the TRS connectors, you're going to see in a moment how they're connected. Now on the rear of the little 1.8, as I mentioned earlier, I have these connections at the back here. So if I was to connect my interface to this, the main reason is to have the outputs of whatever channels I want sent to the summing mixer sent to either these channels here. So I could have it mono or stereo, however I desire to have it. In this instance, I'm just going to connect all these up to show you guys how to set it up in an entirety so you can kind of see exactly how this works. All right, so let's talk about the summing mixer and talk about the connections on the rear. So if I flip this around, you'll see on the rear of the summing mixer, it has labels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the final output here, which is labeled output, and here you can see labeled input. Now, if I put my inputs uh, my input section, which is actually coming from the output, which I showed you earlier, the outputs of the DB25 connector, which leads to these cables here. Now, as you can see, all of these cables are labeled one to eight as well. And I really like the fact that they're done like that because it makes it a lot easier when I'm connecting it to the rear of my interface. Well, I should say my summing mixer, which is the little one eight. Now this can be applicable to any summing mixer. Generally, uh, you may see different connections on the back here. So it could be TRS, could be XLR, could be DB25. Uh, it depends uh, whatever connection that you have there. Uh, depending on what you want or what you use, uh, it's up to you. But I'm using TRS because TRS are quite often easily found and I prefer those. And also they don't take a lot of space, whereas an XLR connection would. Uh, sometimes DB25 connections would be the best in this scenario. You could just have two of those if you wanted to have 16 channels of mono. Uh, but for this one, I've only got eight. But let's get into how it connects. So as you can see on the back of here, I've got all of my channel connectors. Uh, so my TRS cables and they are balanced. So you can see that there's two rings and the tip. So balanced connectors here and generally balanced are better for distance and that's why I prefer them. There's a lot of other technical reasons. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but uh, we'll just go and connect these up. So as you see here, I've got label one, if that wants to focus. So we've got label one, gonna put that straight into label one. Now that goes into one and we'll follow in the same order as it goes through and you'll see I get connection two and you probably would wanna put two and then one so you don't have to fiddle around at the back there too much, but I'm just going to follow this. You're going to see in the second, that's going to be all up to eight connections. And that's from my DB25 connector. So let's get this and we'll fast forward in just a moment. All right. So you can see on the back of the summing mixer. Now I have all of my connections from the rear of my interface, as I showed you earlier, that all fed through this DB25 connector cable and then into the rear of the input section of the summing mixer, the little one eight. Now for the output of the summing mixer, the little one eight, I wanna have these cables, which I just dropped something on the floor, but these are also balanced cables, TRS. Now I'm gonna have the red one on the left channel 
And then if I cannot drop the cable, I'll have the other one on the right channel, the black one. And the only reason why I do this doesn't matter about the color. The reason why I do it is so that I remember which one my left and right channel is. So in theory, one and two. So one is red, two is black. So you can see on the interface, this is my input section on the interface. Now I have these two plugged in, my left being one, my right being the two, and that is the input or the preamp on my interface. This interface is the Studio Orion interface, Antelope Audio Synergy Core. It doesn't really matter what interface you use. Basically what does matter though is the fact that you have multiple outputs on your interface uh, versus having just two single outputs for the monitors. So in theory for running a summing mixer, even if you're just doing a stereo pair, being a left and a right channel, you would wanna have at least an additional pair of outputs on your interface. So whatever interface you're using, depending on that model, brand, whatever that is, you wanna have at least one set of studio monitors and then an additional set of outputs that can go to a summing mixer. If not more than an additional set, you'd wanna have at least eight like I do here or 16, or depending on the connections on the summing mixer, you might want to sum 32 channels, for example. But for this example, we've got eight channels, which that's eight mono. I'm going to use it in stereo pairs. So in theory, I'll have four stereo pairs or eight mono channels. So let's get to the interface itself. Let's go into also how I do the connections on this. Uh, this is specific to the Orion Studio, and let's go into that now. All right, so now we're in the interface itself, my Studio Orion Synergy Core interface, and you can see I have a total of 16 inputs on my interface. Now I'm only going to utilize two of these because the summing mixer has an output left and right. Now the input section of the summing mixer goes to this section here. So my comp play, which basically means my play section. So where all of my audio is fed out of all the channels. And I'll show you this in Studio One in just a moment. So it makes a whole lot more sense. But basically these channels here, so one and two are my stereo outputs on my final bus out. So the final mix bus on my door of choice being Studio One. And then the other channels are unutilized unless I use them for whatever I want. So in this situation, I'm going to use up to three to 10. So this is eight channels in total. So you can see I'll grab all three of these by holding shift on the keyboard and then dragging them down to my line out. Now on the back of my interface, as you recall, and I'll show you now, that was the DB25 connector. Now that DB25 connector is now feeding audio from these channels, which I told it to from three to 10. And that will be shown reflecting in Studio One as well shortly. Now, the output section, that basically is just going to feed the audio. So I'm going to be able to use either four buses or eight channels in total uh, of either mono or stereo if it's four. Uh, that'll make probably a lot more sense in just a minute. And then to return, I have some three and four. I labeled it three and four because in my Again, interface, uh, I'm not wanting to utilize one and two. I want to utilize three and four because that's the, the next channel is available. So we're going to highlight those and bring those all the way down to three and four here on my comp record. So comp record is basically the record section and comp play is the play section. So where all the audio is fed out, this is where all the audio is fed in. So if we go into Studio One, now this probably will make, make a little bit more sense once you get into Studio One and see what I'm referring to. If you're using other DAWs of choice, uh, you know, be it Pro Tools, Logic, all of those other ones that are out there, uh, some of the routing matrices might be a little bit different to how they work, but in, essentially it's the same kind of concept. So you just have to look for your specific door and your routing matrix and also your specific interface and its routing matrix. Now this is the Orion as I mentioned and in Studio One I'm going to show you how that's set up. So let's get to Studio One, bring that up right now. So I'll bring up Studio One 5. Uh, I don't have 6 but this is still applicable for 6 and I probably will get 6 very shortly to do more tutorials like this. Um, you saw my previous video about that and why my hesitations are. All right, so now we're here in Studio One and I want to show you the routing that I use and the setup. So highlight this little thing down the bottom here, your sample rate. You can click on that with the left click and that will bring up your IO setup. So now I've already got my IO here. Uh, if I didn't, it would show a preferences section down here and you could choose your IO to be whatever interface you have. 
and you'd select that. So since I've got the Orion uh, Studio, I'll select that. It should have, have this as both playback and also the same at the device. So device recording, device playback, either or, same thing. Uh, and have this selected around about 120, depending on the sample rate that you'd like to use or the samples, I should say. So we hit song setup to get into the IO scenario. And as I was mentioning before, the output section, this is my mains. So I try to avoid anything usage wise on one and two because I've already got that selected for my mains and that's for my Orion Studio. And I don't wanna use anything else aside from one and two. So that's where I've allocated these. Along the top here, you can see up to 24 channels. And it's a little bit confusing because you go down here and it doesn't really reflect that identically. But what it does do is shows you, you know, the channel that you have. So you can set a stereo or a mono pair depending on what you want. And this is how we're gonna show you how to set it up. Now the IO scenario, this is where it gets a little bit interesting, but it's not too difficult to understand and I'll show you how and why. So in the input section, now, first of all, you remember in the Antelope Orion scenario, I was saying my inputs were this, so I was summing three and four, and that was going into my preamp. Now that's gonna reflect according to the input section here, so I want my input two. This is just showing the, the section here of the channels. But if you look along the top line here, you can see all of my channels available on that. Now, if I was to select this as a stereo, now this is a stereo input, so I can label this if I want. I'll just highlight it and put some. And I could actually label that sum in if I wanted to. So dash and then in. And that'll, that'll tell me when I select this, and I'll show you shortly, uh, this will tell me a lot more information when I select it. So I do that because I wanna know what I'm selecting. And then when you get this area, you hit apply. So it activates the channel, and that is now input three and four, which I showed you in the Orion. Now for the outputs, uh, these just ignore this because this is my SSL style of compressor, uh, and I had my mastering uh, chain as well in that so I'm not using these but this is a stereo input so left and right and that's three and four now to the output section if I just move this out of the way and put this change this to some I could put some one to eight so I could do some one label this some two uh, we'll just do some two so I'll highlight this and I'm doing this in stereo pairs. So just remember, I only have four because there's a total of eight channels. And if you divide eight by two, you get four. So if, you, if you're if you using this in a stereo set, then you're only gonna get four channels in total. And that's what I'm aiming for because I like to sum my stuff to buses rather than individual channels. I just feel like in this situation where I have you know only a set number of summing area so eight in total i don't really feel like eight's enough to set individual instruments out to each you know channel itself so i prefer to put things in buses so it makes it easier i can put my vocals my drums my synths and everything else i want into the other buses so i could label these if i wanted to you know some one two three four or drums vocals synth uh anything else you feel like putting in there so that's how you can do that. Now, if I do this, I can put my channel three and four. So I could do stereo pair there. The next stereo pair is five and six. So stereo pair there. The next pair then is seven and eight. So stereo pair there. And then the next set, it's the last set is nine and 10. So you can see my four channels and hit apply. Now you'll see those highlight now. And that should mean that when I send my audio out of these channels. So I'm summing one, two, three, and four. It goes to these channels reflecting accordingly across the top here. And now they're highlighted, so that means they're active. And that's all that you really need to see inside of Studio One for the IO setup. Now going back to the inputs, again, I'm summing into this channel, so that's my three and four. And on the front of my interface, you would have seen the red and black cable. That's where those go. The DB25s are going to here. So all those uh, cables that I connected to the back of the sewing mixer, now they reflect accordingly. So if I hit OK, now the tricky thing is with this part, if I was to get my audio and drop it in here, so say for example, I had loops and I wanted to use, I don't know, whatever loop I wanted to, I throw it in here um, and then it goes onto its own channel. So let's just do that. Let's just see what uh, this kind of thing would bring up. So that's a loop. 
if I highlight this, now you'll see automatically it selects the input as one. I don't want that to happen because I don't want an input. I want that to be just on its own and the output I'll bus to a bus itself. So say for example, I was to get a drum kit, throw that here, we're just gonna stretch it to the same length uh, to you know try and make this uh, equal sort of scenario. So if I was to get all these sounds and put them into the summing mixer, I'll just get another set of sounds. We'll go for a keyboard, drag that in there, stretch that out, and let's get another thing. We'll get some pads and throw that on there. So we've got a total of four uh, sounds here. Now just imagine these are your entire uh, sounds. You've got, you could have 16, 50, who knows? You could have a thousand different sounds, but you have to bust them down in total so that it sets it to a bus. So what you do to do that is down here on the channel mixer, and it may work a little bit differently in Studio One Six now because they've got additional stuff, but for the most part, all of these things apply. So if you were to right click, you could actually send or add a bus for the selected channels. So say I want to get my vocals all together, highlight them all together, and then send them to a bus, and I could label this vocals or vox. And I would do this with my drums. If I had drums in all of these kits, I would be able to do that as well. Now I'm not going to play these straight away, but if I was playing these through, you'd have every single sound coming out and it would be all in these channels and then it would go to this bus here, which I could then sum that bus to my summing mixer. So if I label that sum one, now that's gonna go out to my summing mixer and I won't be able to hear anything until I tell you know Studio One to bring it back in. Now this is where you then highlight a input channel uh, you can see my name here, so N828, uh, but we don't want that. We want uh, something that reflects a stereo channel. So I'll highlight stereo. I'll bring this into my input as sum in, which we labeled earlier. And then I don't need presets. I just want this to go to the mains and then I can do that accordingly. So the thing with the sum in, and I can label this sum in so that it makes more sense. And we'll just do that now. So sum in. And we're going to highlight this and change it to a funky color. We'll go yellow so it sticks out and do that. And you could actually move this right to the end if you wanted to as, you know, whatever order you wanted to have your buses in. Uh, depends on how you want to do that. I don't really care. It doesn't matter too much. But what I do care is that the audio uh, recording is enabled and that I can hear if I record this uh, what's going on. So if I'm going to turn these down, it might sound crazy. I have no idea what these uh, sounds are going to sound like when I sum them but this is just purely for tutorial purposes. So I'll turn these right down uh, to make sure they're not gonna blast us out. And we're gonna see if we get some audio uh, from the summing channel to the input channel and let's play. Look at that. All right, we got audio and that's what we're after. So if we turn this up, all right, so we're summing back into Studio One now. And the way that you would normally deal with this, if you wanted to record back in, hit record and arm that track and then you should be able to record the audio like you see happening right now and you'll see in a moment that should be recorded and we have the summed channel back in studio one as a summed channel now the thing is with this i guess it depends on how you work your workflow if this works for you and or if it doesn't now Personally, I like to sum just in a stereo pair because in some occasions you might you know, not want to go through and have a whole setup. You can in Studio One, especially now in six, you can have presets and I believe you can do that as well in Studio One five. I haven't really wanted to or needed to, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys how you would record back in the sum channel. And this would be the audio that you summed in. So if I was to you know, pan this channel left and right, uh, or somewhere in between. Now I'm gonna get a little bit more clarity because I'm summing to analog. Uh, it's something you wanna watch my other video about if you wanna see what summing is. But basically the concept of summing is using analog uh, capacitors, other different things inside of the analog realm and then bring it back into the digital sense. So it gives it a bit more flavor or harmonics. Now, the thing with this summing mixer is the, the ability to distort or add additional harmonics. Now with this summing mixer, it's reducing the audio down by about 26 or 25 dB. I can't remember exactly which one I got. It was somewhere around that, maybe 20 dB. I, I do not recall exactly. 
But how I made up for that was inside of this, uh, I could actually increase the audio if I wanted to by increasing it by 15 or 18 dB, whatever I desired to. And that wouldn't really change too much as far as the input. Now, if I was playing it, you can see my input here, I've increased this by 10 and that's my SSL uh, input preamp uh, for my you know, channel six channel there that I've got that I'm recording audio on. That's where that's going to right now. And I've used 10 dB of increase of gain on top of the other gain that I've already got. So it really depends on how you want to work with your summing, but the input section that could be left at zero, if you want to really push the summing mixer to its limits and get some harmonics out of it, you can really boost this audio a lot and you know throw that right up there as long as it's not distorting too much of course uh, but you can really get a lot of harmonic content out of the summing mixer and then as the summing mixer being passive when it comes back in it's actually reducing the volume because of the capacitors and it's a passive summing mixer it's not active uh, this one's not at least anyway uh, and you can work with that and then you could use plugins on the way out if you decided to you could have like an ssl style of compressor uh, let's just do that for now um whoop ssl can't spell so if i wanted to have i could have my ssl uh this one here i could have this on my output section of the summing mixer and do the ssl style of compression before it hits the summing or I could do it on the way out or in, whichever one suits me, it really depends on how it works for you. But it's just something I want to show you guys and give you more of a comprehensive setup of how this all works. Now, if I was going to utilize all of the buses on my summing mixer, so all of my eight channels, what I could do is send individual sounds out to you know each uh, bus. So for example, I'll just say these are gonna be a stereo file each, so four in total and i might color code them just a little bit differently so that it's kind of obvious what's going on here we'll go with uh, some really interesting colors and make that obvious so change this to i don't know purple okay so say we have this track here the track that has my uh let's see what's this got it's something to my main so we'll have a listen all right so that's my bass track and i'm going to label that bass now, if I was labeling each thing, for example, bass, uh, I don't know, synth, I'm just going to listen to this. We'll send all these to the main so I can actually hear them and find out what they are. Uh, so let's solo that. All right, so that's my drums. So just make sure because labeling is kind of crucial to know where things are going and that way you don't get lost in this process. So we're going to solo, if I can, unsolo that. Oh, there we go. All right, so we've got this, I'll listen to this. All right, that's the keyboard. So we'll go keyboard. And then we'll label this one. I think this is like a synth. Yep, sure is. I should really like that synth sound. And this is like a kind of weird kind of sounding track already. So I'm already digging it. Uh, but anyway, so what we're trying to do here is label these. I should do that in, in big uh, writing here. So upper upper letters. All right, so for example, uh, how I want to send these out if I wanted to bust them out individually. So say I had a lot of bass sounds or I had a lot of synth sounds, or, you know, vocals, whatever, uh, in this sense, what I have is synth, keyboard, drums, and bass. Now they're all stereo channels, so I'm gonna bust them individually and I'll send one to some one, one to some two, one to some three, and one to some four. Now that means I've utilized all of my channels on the back of my summing mixer. As you can see now, every single one is summing to a stereo channel. So I've got a total of four channels, like I mentioned earlier. And now I should be able to hear nothing when I play or press play. All right, so you can see individually each channel is going out and there's no audio coming back in. And that is because everything is being summed, but I don't have an input yet. And my input, which I used here previously, I'm just going to move this across to the side here. So I'm not using the play channel there. But what I want to do here is label this sum in. So I have this as the three and four input, which we discussed earlier, and that is now summing in. And I have to have this armed as at least a listen or armed to record if I want to record. So I can listen now if I arm this and press play, go back to the start. Now that now is summing each individual channel. So I could pan this all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Uh, maybe I just want to mute this out for a second and hit play. Let's have a listen. So 
So that allows you a lot of flexibility when it comes to summing the sounds all in different areas of the mix if you want to have more clarity. Um, I feel like summing gives you just a little bit more in-depth clarity. It's really hard to explain. It's more of an analog thing. And I don't really want to go into it in this tutorial. That's not the purpose. But what I'm trying to show you is that if I used all of my channels in the summing mixer, which I have a total of four stereo pairs, or if I want to split these into mono channels and I'd have to go into the IO and change that up again if I was to do that. So the way I would do that is I'd go to my output section here. Uh, primarily because I'm summing out, these have to be changed to mono. So you'd have to remove that uh, and then create a mono channel. So if I added a mono channel, now you can see here, if I highlight this, I would have to bring this over to this and then, you know, obviously apply it. That would create one left or one right channel, depending on where I position this on the output section here. But if it was at three, I could have one left channel and then create a second mono channel for the right channel and then have eight total channels. I don't want to do that because I'm not trying to sum it that way. I prefer to do things in groups. But if you really wanted to use all of your channels and have mono channels and that, you know, that availability, that's how you would do it. On the input, it would still remain the same. You'd still sum all to one because obviously that's what the purpose of summing it is, sum to one or a stereo pair. And that would still remain as your sum to one or sum in. And that's how you'd set it up if you're doing individual channels. But for this, I like to, sometimes I just do a stereo sum. Uh, sometimes I'll do, you know, like I've shown you here, I'll do a group set where I can individually do things. So I get a little bit more control over the panning or whatever I want on the four groups that I have available. But this is pretty much how you do it in Studio One. Again, in other doors, it would work slightly similar or a little bit different depending on the IO setup and also on the IO setup of your interface. This would also work differently as well depending on what interface you're using. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more clarity on how to set this summing mixer up. Um, I don't have other interfaces to show you, so I'd say the main thing is just have an interface that can run uh, at least two or more outputs uh, that are additional to the studio monitors that you have. So that way you can sum at least a stereo pair out and then back in and you can use the, uh, the summing mixer like I have here. Uh, and it'll give you some, you know, a little bit harmonic content that you want or just a little bit more clarity in the panning. Whatever you're using it for, it's up to you. But hopefully this helps you and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.